the Chrissy Swan Show. Oh, hello there. We're going to get you in the mood for your weekend. We're almost there. I feel like this week has dragged. Like It feels like a fortnight. Yeah, I'm really happy to see Friday. Are you? Yeah. How are you feeling today? Did you go out bit- last night? Did you do anything? <laughs> I did. I went for to an event and then went for dinner with my friends, Shireen and Dan. Had some beautiful Greek food. What did you do, Swanee? Wow, I made a fantastic dinner. What? Tell me. I used a San Remo Sporale. Oh, yeah. And then I made like a chili cream tomato sauce. It was so delicious. The toilets would have been in use last night. Oh, in the yes. House. Ring sting <laughs> to the max. Now, say good day. I've got something very specific I want to know. What is in your boot? Because if you notice I'm feeling fresh and like I've achieved something. What have you done? I have been driving around with some Kmart bed linen in my boot for about two weeks. Okay. Because I do this annoying thing. Well, I'm going to tell you why the bed linen was in my boot for two weeks after the song. 13, 24, 10, call us and say g'day and give us an inventory of what is currently in your boot. Has the Logies dress left your boot? Yes. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That's two years. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Let's say g'day. Chrissy's Say G'day. Say g'day and tell me what's in your boot. 13, 24, 10. Uh, I did confess earlier that in my boot for the last two weeks have been unopened packets of bed linen from Kmart. And the reason I've got to return them is not because they're not excellent, because they are. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm a very annoying person, mainly to myself. Yeah. And I read something somewhere that said the best way to make your bed look great is you buy bed linen, the doona cover and the doona right. one size bigger than the bed. Yes. That's the rule of thumb. I was brought up like that. I've always done that. I've n- I have never done that. Until, really? Yeah, until about two years ago when I was refreshing yeah, all the okay. kids' beds and I, and I went, That's I'm going to do that. I think it's a great idea. I think it works. I promptly forgot. So, for example, Peg's bed is a double. Right. Her doona, like the fitted sheet, is a double, but the doona is a queen, yes. and so therefore she needs queen bed linen. Of course, I bought all yeah. the bed linen that fits the bed. <laughs> what an idiot. Did and you finally return it, though? I did finally return good it, song. and it feels so good. And it, what is in your boot, my baby? Annette. Oh, hi, Chrissy. Hi. Hi. Good. Hey, Annette. Hi. what you're up to and I used to do the same thing when my kids were little but I would go to the effort of transferring them to the gift cupboard. Why are they still in your boot? So what happens is that usually I find them on a day when maybe I've done the grocery shopping or something so it comes down to what's necessary to get out of the boot. Yes. And sometimes those gifts they're just sort of low on the priority list. Yes. Um, eventually I might remember or it's not until I actually need a gift I go oh I should go check out what's in the boot. Can I can I make a suggestion? Because um, I I hear you. I think if you have a garage, put a cupboard in the garage, and that's your gift cupboard, and you don't have to walk anything inside. Smart. And then you've got the nice feeling of knowing your boots sort of empty and clean. Yes, which is right up I your know. alley. Annette, you're in the draw for over ten k a day in May, thanks to Liberty. Shaz, Shazza, what is in your boot? Hello, um, I'm driving around with three bottles of vodka. Oh, yes. Jack wants to know exactly your location, please, Shaz. <laughs> Why? It's to celebrate my sister's engagement. Oh, how exciting. Thank and what, what are you going to make with that vodka? What are you? We're going to drink it all. Yes, I know. <laughs> what is your favourite drink to be made with vodka? Um, just vodka and orange. That's all Ooh. vodka, lemon, lime bitters. Ooh. That's our favourite. Are we talking uh, Belvedere, Grey Goose, Smirnoff, Absolute? Grey Goose. Oh, duh. You're not an idiot. Oh, how, fa- <laughs> how fancy. Is a vodka and orange... Oh, no. no, Wow. None of that. Um, is a vodka and orange a Harvey Wallbanger or something like that? I feel like it's called... Oh, I've not heard that. I feel like that is. I anyway, like it. if you know what it is, do give okay. us a call. Lulu, you have Hello, a- hello. Lulu, what have you got in your boot? I've got two baby lambs that have come into my care. 
Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say yum. <laughs> uh, how cute. What are they doing um, in your boot, though? So uh, one of their mums got um, killed overnight and the other one was just uh, rejected. So I care for them until they can go to their adoptee. Oh, my God. And do they do that little sucky thing on bottles and whatever, they- Lou? They do. They've got and they've got knitted jumpers on with a oh little nappy on each of them. How cute! What kind of car are you getting around in? Um, I'm in a Ford Mondeo because my uh, my animal transport truck uh, died, oh <laughs> so I've got dear. my partner's. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. I've got a great lamb shoulder recipe. (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. At Priceline, you can get a free Shane Warne Legacy heart test on a Sisu health station with results in as little as four minutes. Tracking your health is easy at Priceline. Visit priceline.com.au to find your nearest participating store. The Chrissy Swan Show. What has been, in your past or present, a secret hiding place? We talk about this because a roof ninja has been located in a store sign on top of a, like a mall in America, in, in, uh, where was it? Missouri or Michigan? Michigan. So before you think, oh yeah, someone's living in a shop. No, they're not. If you've ever been to America, there are all these little malls everywhere and there's big signs on the front saying, you know, dollar store or whatever. This woman has been living inside the sign on the roof. It's a triangle, essentially, on top of the store. And it looks like it'd be quite spacious, Swanee. Well, I mean, I'm a bit jealous because she's been living (laughs) there for a year. And look, it's not a huge area, but this is what she had in there. And this roof ninja is a woman after my own heart because these are my essentials. She had a coffee maker. A bed, obviously. With a coffee maker? Like, she must have found a PowerPoint up there. I will explain what happened there. Okay, great, great. A coffee maker, a computer, a phone, and a printer. That is all I need. A printer? That is all I need to keep me happy. you'd be able to work the printer, you'd just look at it and get frustrated. Listen, how very (laughs) dare you. Now, you did mention how she getting all this electricity. That was actually how she was found. Ah. The store... Followed an extension cord, an Stop. errant extension cord from the plug inside the shop under a door up the roof and into her house. Now, when she was found, uh, she was a, she was very like polite and good. It was almost like, ah, oh, well, you got me. Yeah, and uh, I had a good year. Yeah, I had a good year. And uh, the policeman uh, told her that she had a nickname. Probably taking a few hours. Uh, that's not going to happen. You, people, people have seen you in the area, I guess. Apparently, yeah. they've seen you up here. So they, believe it or not, you got a nick. You got a nickname. No, Roof Ninja. Good guess though. Good guess though. Yeah. Spider Man. Uh, no, Roof Ninja. Did you have any hiding spots growing up or now? Well, I ran away once when I was little to this historical cottage in my suburb called Shram's Cottage. But I've just remembered. In the house I grew up in, mm. there was it was a bit of an odd house, right? And if you opened the linen cupboard yeah. and then pushed like a heavy tapestry oh, curtain. That's cool. I know, and I just remembered it. You could climb through the linen cupboard, through the tapestry curtain, and then there was like a dark room with carpet in it and a slanted Roof and it was it sort of ran in the roof between my sister's bedroom and the and the so linen it was just cupboard. like dead space that they'd carpeted yeah and, and was I the just only re- way I remember very clearly climbing through it and just being in there and that was the only way you could get there through the linen yes, cupboard yes yes how cool I loved hiding as a kid like yeah. that was my favorite game I reckon hide and seek I just that, I think I loved how naughty it was just to hide from people uh, the um the thrill is yes, real. yes the thrill it's absolutely 13, exhilarating 24 10 what is your hiding spot or maybe your kids have one and you're currently trying to find them the Chrissy Swan show the Chrissy Swan show we're talking about your favorite hiding spots do I bet you used to hide I I had a um I remember in primary school my sister Georgia and I would go down to like a tree house at like a reserve at the end of our street and I just thought it was the best thing ever and I remember we used to like decorate the tree house Oh my god. <laughs> like that Do you would think be- they knew? <laughs> 132410 though we want to hear your weird hiding spots Yeah Stacy hello 
Hi, how are you? Good. Does your son love hide and seek? Yes. It's a regular game in our house at least once a week with the boys. I used to love it. I, I used to really get into it with my kids until I realised that if I didn't look for them, that bought me about 20 minutes of peace. <laughs> Time to read a book and relax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you'd hear these little voices like, are you looking for me? <laughs> Stacey, where does your son like to hide? I'm in the laundry sink. So you asked me to lift him up in the laundry sink and I've got to put dirty clothes and towels over the top of him. Oh, my God. How old is he? He's just turned nine. Oh, I thought you were going to say he was 17. <laughs> no, <but yeah. laughs> um, Not I, yet. I love that story. I love it. Emma, where is your favourite hiding spot or your kids? Hello, Tristy. Well, my kids totally embarrass me whenever they have a play date because they don't want the play date to end. So they hide, and we've got lots of wardrobes in our house, which initially I thought, great, so much storage space. But now I hate it because they're totally silent. And I'm at the front door trying to convince this other parent that I have been supervising their child and that they <laughs> are in the house. They're just are so quiet when they're hiding. You've reminded me, my middle son, Kit, used to uh, like go over to someone else's house for a play date. And then I would go and pick him up and he would run and hide as if he lived in the worst, worst. house ever. <laughs> and at one point at one point I had to beg him to come off the hot water water service down the side wow. of the house. He's like, no, nope, I'm not going home. I went, please get this yeah, very embarrassing. I'm gonna have to bring in the super nanny. Yes. <laughs> Emma, do you just like waltz through your house with the other parents then looking for them? Yes, we do, and the kids show <laughs> such commitment to it. And I say, please don't do that next time. It was so embarrassing, but obviously they think it's hysterical. Yeah, absolutely. It. And then you get stern, like, listen to me now. Yeah. Say where you are. <laughs> yeah, also, no, the no. other parents must walk through Emma's house being like, mate. <laughs> look at this, this storage <laughs> space. Libby, let's finish with you. Where was your favourite hiding spot? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so when I was in high school, we used to obviously wag a lot. Um, and basically, when we'd wag, there was uh, like a the, the fire hose, um, where the fire hose would be. It's a really, really small area. Me and two friends used to hide hide in there yes. from, from the deputies. <laughs> oh, my God, you've unlocked a memory. Yeah. We used to do that too. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Let's go clicking. Chrissy's Clickbait. Press release from Channel 10. I'm always all ears and eyes when that happens. The Masked Singer is making its triumphant return. No, despite Ah. a very popular petition that has seven signatures on it. All oshers. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, The Masked Singer is not returning, but... Channel uh, Network 10 is now your home of iconic soaps and daytime chats. Soaps can go away. I don't care about soaps. We've got neighbours, mate. We don't need any more soaps. Younger, restless and days of our lives into episode 17 million. But here is the news. What? The Drew Barrymore show is coming to 10. It is going to be on air every day at 11am. And guess where I'm going to be? Watching. As soon as I work out how to watch free to wear on my television, I am going to be there. I don't know how to do it, Jack. I just—I promise you, it's so easy. Is you? Do you have a Samsung TV? If you just click the home button on your TV mm. and then arrow down, it, it literally there's a square there that will say la, live TV. La, la. <laughs> it's easy. La. <laughs> You're still going to work in TV. You probably need to work out how to get the am live I? TV bit. <laughs> am I? <laughs> I'm manifesting that for you. Am I though? Yes. We're going to do the Amazing Race Celeb Edition next year. Oh, I would love that. I know. That would be fun. I would love that. Um, But I am excited because I love Drew Barrymore. She's one of my queens and I get to see live this sort of lady madness. I need you to be Marmala of the country. Okay, yeah. (laughs) We need you to be Marmala, Kamala. We need you to be Marmala. And then I get to see her hugging everyone in her oversized suits and, ah! And grabbing everyone's hands as she sits with them. Yeah. I wonder what her hands feel like. I wonder if Drew gets, like, because if I was on a TV set, Mm. I'd get somewhat sweaty hands, I think. I wonder if her hands are sweaty while she's I don't think they are. I think she's cool as a cucumber. Because she's been in front of the camera since she was, like, four. Yeah, true. It's like her second time. Now, I just think this is a delightful story. A fall from grace and uh, not from a very great height, Sean Kingston. Beautiful girl. That's why it'll never work. Okay, so how old is this song? This song was 2007. I cannot 
believe that for starters. I know. It's nearly 20 years old. Yeah. Did he have any other songs? He had another one that didn't do as well as this one. I forget it's... It's title. Uh, well, look, I mean... Eeny Meeny with Justin Bieber. Oh, yes. No, I don't know that. <laughs> he has suffered a very bad fall from grace. But... Um, <laughs> What's happened? There's been a raid at his house. And, you know, we're used to all of these terrible things happening to people for very untoward reasons. Yes. Illegal it, reasons. It's not like a Diddy vibe No, raid. it's not. That was horrific, horrific. by the what way. An awful, awful what man. An animal. Actual. Yuck. Anyway, no. And it's not Drogas. It is. Drogas. <laughs> Sofia Vergara is here. It is. Oh, I never finished that. I never finished that, Griselda. Griselda? Swan, it's like six eps, mate. I know, but I started watching it with my <laughs> son and then it got very untoward. <laughs> I know, that's my fault. I did tell you you could watch it yeah, with your yeah. kids. Yeah, um, and then I never went back to it. Now, back to Sean Kingston. Yeah. Which is a name that we never thought we'd be talking about again. (laughs) But here we go. He has had a raid performed on his house because he has been promising uh, his clout, which is not significant. No, it's not 2007. No, in exchange for free stuff. Okay. Now, a guy, an attorney representing a television company turned up to Sean Kingston's house. Heaps of people swarmed the place. They took down one thousand LED screens that he'd had installed. I mean, who does he think he is? Also, what's he doing with 1,000 LED screens? What's wrong with a 62-incher? Exactly. (laughs) Sean, you had one song a million years ago. (laughs) My favourite part of this story, though, um, was that while the TV guys were there taking away the television, $150,000 worth, by the way, Yeah. Two other women turned up and said, I'm going to take that bed. We gave him that very expensive bed. <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurtling towards the weekend, there's no way of stopping us now, Jackie. No, Swanee. What's on for your weekend? I am. No, you go first because, uh, you know, th- there's no. Bigger illustration of two very, very different lifestyles <laughs> as you and I. What is your weekend entail? Mine's relatively chill tonight. I'm just going for a couple of drinks and pizza with a couple of my mates and then the same thing Sunday night. Tomorrow night, no plans. Oh, that sounds all right. I know. I know. I'll, I'll get back to you Monday how that goes. Yeah, I know. I can't wait. <laughs> what about you? I am very excited. I've actually prepared a to-do list for this wow. weekend. And it involves um, sorting out Kit's pop vinyls. His <laughs> what? His pop vinyls collection. Does he have vinyls? You know, no, they're like little figurines. Oh, I thought you meant he had like proper vinyls. No. Like, cute. Okay. And um, I'm also doing something that I have meant to do for two weeks, which is clean out the rabbit hutch. <laughs> I hate your life. Oh my God, not as much as I do. <laughs> hey, Frank Green's a lucky bag. It is the last day that you can win one it and the bum is. bag, of course. 13, 24, 10. Get on air in Chrissy's quizzy. The Frank Green lucky bag is. Back with your chance to win fifty thousand dollars. Hurry, though, stock is strictly limited. Search frankgreen.com.au. T's and C's apply. The Chrissy Swan Show. Gosh, we have loved giving away these Frank Green lucky bags, but today is the last day. Chrissy's Quizzy. Excuse me, Hollywood Jack and Kristen and Wendy, while I take a sip from my brand new. Chocolate top and bottom Frank Green. Excuse me, call it by its true colour, espresso. <laughs> no, I called it espresso. I, I looked it up online, it was chocolate. No, we're renaming it espresso. It's chocolate, isn't it? Yeah, it's chocolate. Damn no, it. it is espresso. It is chocolate. It is chocolate, chocolate. yes. <laughs> we got there. Anyway, uh, Kristen and Wendy, you are up for both the limited edition Chrissy's One Drive on Bag and the Frank Green Lucky Bag, and I think I know which bag you want more. Let's go, ladies. Your names are your buzzers. It's the best of five, meaning the first person to get three answers correct wins the game. Question number one. Which Australian actor received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame overnight? Yes, Kristen? It was Chris Hemsworth. It was Chris Hemsworth. I I really took the shine off um, that honour when I realised that if you get a star, you've got to pay $30,000 a year or something. to. What? Yeah. So how it works is... Hang on. Yeah. The um, Academy of Motion Pictures or whoever does those stars... 
they send you an email saying, oh, we're, we're you know, thrilled to tell you that you're going to get a star. Um, it's going to cost you thirty grand to start with and then you need to pay us $20,000 to maintain it every year. <laughs> That's a bit wow. rich. It is a bit rich, Kristen. All right, question number two. A B-double is a type of what? Kristen. Yes, Kristen. It is a truck. It is a truck. Oh, my God, Kristen, you can smell it, can't you? Victory. <laughs> I'm so close. So close. Okay. Question number three. 19 years ago to the day, Rihanna released this song. Kristen. Yes, Kristen, for the win. It's Ponder Replay. It is Ponder Replay. Gosh, you're good at this, yeah. Kristen. Kristen, well what, what do you do for a living? You're very on it. Um, I'm a PE teacher. Ah. Okay. So my reflexes are good. Yes, they are. I'm dealing are. with kids. You've got to Definitely. be pretty quick. Yes, they are. Can you please promise me now, for everybody that's just been picked up from school and they're listening in the car, can you please promise me, as a PE teacher, you will not put any more children through the trauma of A, the body mass index test, and <laughs> nah. two, the beep test. I can only I can only get rid of body mass, but beep test, so good. So good. Kids love it. It is not they so they good. Don't. <laughs> I'm they s- pretend they don't love it, but they secretly do because on, they like to compete against each other. On behalf of every child that's ever drawn breath, I'm taking that prize out of your hand, Kristen. I'm giving it to Wendy. I'm not really. I don't have that power. The good news God is you're you. both in the draw for Nova's 10K a day in May, thanks to Liberty. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. The nut bush. Bush. Now, this is a very famous song. Back in the 90s when I used to be a mobile DJ, yes, you heard that, right? I used to uh, turn up to 21sts or yeah. whatever, end of year football things. And I would set up a, uh, a homemade disc man that was glued to a console. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that was the DJ equipment and I would do it. And then the uh, first strains of that song by Tina Turner... An absolute classic would come out and the, everybody in the party knew exactly what to do. Yes. Now, of course, Tina Turner is an American icon, global icon, but obviously from America. And Nutbush is where she grew up, where she was born. Nutbush. So she's singing about the place the, that she grew yeah, up. Yeah. Dr. Chris Brown was in here last week, plugging his 7,000 new shows. Dream home. Dream home. Starts this weekend, I think, if anyone's actually interested. Yeah, Sunday night. Yeah. And he said, he absolutely blew my mind because I was today years old when I realised that the nut bush, the dance that everyone seems to know exactly how to do here, is an Australian phenomenon. They don't know how to do it in America. If you're on a dance floor anywhere in America and that song starts, nobody starts moving side to side and jumping and whatever it is that they do. They would think we're like malfunctioning or something. Did you know that? I did not know that until Dr. Chris said that. So I have, because one of my, my our favourite segments that we do here is I was today years old. Yes. And I was today years old when Chris, when Dr. Chris Brown told me this. Same. Turns out that they can trace the origins of the Nutbush dance, not the song obviously, specifically talking about the dance, to the New South Wales Education Department. What? They put it together to get kids moving. And in what year was this? Would have been back in the back when in that the day. song was released. The song was released in 1973, and apparently the the steps to the dance differ from state to state. Are you serious? What do yes. you mean? Like we've all got our own little remixes. Apparently, now I've got another confession about the Nutbush, and that is, I can't do it. Now I have been to many many parties before I was in my full hermit era. Yeah. I actually did leave the house occasionally. <laughs> and every single party in Australia at some point ends up in the nut Yeah, bush. 100%. And I would have to make myself scarce because I can't do a choreographed dance. I can't do it. And that's another reason why I can't do Dancing with the Stars. I was going to say, let's please sign you up for Dancing with the Stars. I can't. I can't. I remember my mum forced me to do jazz ballet when I was about nine and I was like, I came out to the car. She waited in the car park smoking through the whole thing. But I, I <laughs> yes, walked Patty. back out and I was like a hot little Shaolong bow. I was oh. all like, teary and, you know, a little chubby <laughs> in my weird leotard and I'd spent... 45 minutes pretending to pick flowers and put them in a basket oh. and I was just heaving 
with with sad tears because yes. I can't dance. Now, Tom Casamento is a professionally trained dancer, as are you, Jack. I know. I want anyone to know. Tom, please come in. And I'm just wondering, uh, Tom, answer yes or no. Are you an Australian person? <laughs> yes. Uh, are you a dancer? <laughs> Was okay. Yes, you once a dancer, always a dancer. Am I rather than right? Sure is ever. Yeah. Now you would know how to do the the nut bush. Duh. Okay. Now really, you yes. Everybody knows how why to do it. Why don't I? I used to just watch people do it. And be like, no, I'm not doing that. You're yeah, you cool. would have you would have judged people who <laughs> did the nut bush. Yeah, well, you were at the bar. <laughs> yeah, at the age of twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I am going to show you. You're, you're for all intents and purposes my instructor now for the nut bush, which is. Ostensibly not a very difficult dance. Okay. Okay, you're going to teach me. Play it. Hey, can you hear it? Or you put your headphones on. Oh. All right, go. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. Can you see tap, how bad I am? Guys, me. it me. looks like Mr. Me. G me. teaching Jermaine how to dance. Tis, tis, tis. Oh, no. <laughs> my boobs will go right up into my eyes. Coming up next, we're doing Chrissy's Correspondence. The Chrissy Swan Show. Let's read our correspondence, shall we, Jack? Chrissy's Correspondence. I mean, everybody needs to take a chill pill, okay? Oh, what's happened? Who's I'm about, angry? I'm about, someone is very angry. And I'm not going to say her name but just in case she's listening and then she gets mad at me. Mm. So, you know, I like a bit of the woo-woo. I like a bit yeah. of the, you know... Mel Robbins, you can change your life, Bizzo. Let them. If let they em. don't invite you, let them. Let them. Let them. I do love that, though. So do I. I think about that often. I do, do. It really <laughs> makes everything okay. But how's this? I posted a little story. Sometimes if I see something I like that makes me feel good, I'll share it because I figure someone might be over it and they just yeah. see that. Give them a little bit of sunshine yeah. in their day. So I posted a little story. Someone else posted it first. I, I didn't write it. It says, create a life you can't wait to wake up to, which I absolutely prescribe to, subscribe to. Well, this woman was not happy. She replied. So let me just repeat. This is what she's mad about. Me posting something that I didn't write that says, create a life you can't wait to wake up to. She says, literally, how? When there is genocide happening before our eyes. Oh, she went there. This is a ridiculously privileged take. The cost of living is out of control. Homelessness and mental health is literally (laughs) killing people. And our so-called government could not care less. Are your eyes and ears even (laughs) open? Am I working with Peter Credlin? <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. What a character. Also, I'm I think, like, do you want to relax? Also, this person needs to take your advice and create a life they want to wake up to because they don't sound very happy waking up at the moment. But she can't because other people are suffering. Oh. I just feel like that is an overreaction, do you? Yes. Is that an overreaction, Tom? Absolutely. Affirmative. I think it is. Thank you. I love this one too. This is another. It's actually a correspondence segment with a difference this week. It's not just about Chrissy. You look fat. <laughs> 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 it's not just. I wouldn't wear that lipstick if I were you, woman. Oh, Jack, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, what's this? Something so different. So this one, I'm not going to say her name either. But I do get a whole lot of messages like this, and I can't respond to them all because I'm too busy making sourdough, <laughs> and you know. Crying into my cleaning, but, but she wanted to know. She goes, oh, she goes. I um, I've just been. I just finished your your podcast. I'm in a big rut. I drink every single night, and I tell myself I won't every morning. Been there, girl. And uh, she says I really want to walk, and I believe to my core, it's about my mind's health, not my body size. Can you give me three lady tips from you to help my journey? I like this. And here they are. I would probably have six, but given that she's asked for three, put your shoes on every single morning. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Because you need to remove any obstacle that's going to stop you. And we always stop ourselves. We're like, oh, God, no, I can't walk. I'm in heels. Yeah, you're right. Can't walk. This isn't a walking outfit. Wear the walking outfit. Spot on, Swanee. It's like going to the gym. Half of the task is putting the gym wear on. That's it. And nobody can be bothered getting dressed in jeans or whatever and then getting out of that into something else. So, Jack, you can absolutely confirm 
that I have worn these shoes and these pants every day. Every day. For four years. Spot on. Pretty much. Um, and Tip number two. Tip number two is if you've got anything that's hurting you, like if you've got a dicky knee or a sore ankle, go and see a specialist and fix that because that is also going to be stopping you from moving your body. Good. Tip three. Tip three. This one's about the drinking. What you've got to do is we're creatures of habit. So most people, most women, I'm going to say, because this is from a woman, Yeah. most women drink at the same time every single night. It's after dinner or it's after school or whatever. Yeah, while cooking. Yeah. So what you've got to do is replace that when you're getting started. Drink tea. Make a ritual. I went, I did everything. I had baths. I burnt incense and all of that. And what you're doing there is you're not drinking and you're buying time until you start to feel the benefits of it. And then you don't need to have the You've tea and the incense anymore because you're like, oh my God, I feel so good. Yeah, right. But in that little sort of interim period, you just got to be really nice to yourself. Good. You know, watch Three telly, tips. whatever. Swanny. Do we have we run out of time? No, yeah, we have got sort of. Um, what do I say? Which one can I choose here? I can only do one more. What about this one? This listener heard me talking about my whiskers. God, it's a very personal. I really have no filter, do I? I will just talk about anything. <laughs> um, Tom, look at Tom. Tom's <laughs> nodding with his day coat. No. <laughs> I really will not. Is it a problem, Tom? Do no. I share too much? No. Nah. It's your job. Anyway, back on, back on to my whiskers. Yeah. Um, Stacey said, oh, I had a giggle the other day. Speaking of reaching the 50 Club, congrats and welcome. Slow running of your fingers on the chin and neck tweezers. I am one year in and I highly recommend Manicare pink fine hair tweezers. <laughs> Fabulous in the vehicle, the best life. I feel like I'm in an aged care home. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Oh, let's go <laughs> clicking. Chrissy's Clickbait. Listen, I was going to do a very interesting story about how you can keep a lettuce, an iceberg lettuce, fresh for more than 60 days in your fridge. What? But I just, I know. Oh, look, I'll have to do it now. Yeah, you have to. That's really interesting. First of all, pop quiz. Iceberg lettuce, Y slash N. Big Y. The best. Yeah, huge. Do you know, for a long time, iceberg lettuce was out in the wilderness as daggy. Yeah, I and remember it's just come back in. I remember as a kid we always had it, and then I thought, oh, gross. And then in yeah. the last five years, I'm back on Everyone's it in a big like, way. Everyone's like, oh no, I like baby cause. Yeah, cause. <laughs> yeah, um, I like cause. Why cause? Um, <laughs> no, I'm mad for iceberg lettuce, but they do tend to go off fairly quickly unless you eat them on the day, right? But who does that? Sixty days. This guy has been keeping his lettuce fresh in the fridge for sixty days. And you know, I've read the whole article. You don't need to. What's he doing? He's dipping the um, roots, you know, yeah. the, where it's cut off, in alcohol. Like vodka or something? Yes, any sort of alcohol will work. Wine, anything. <gasps> 60 days. That's fantastic. I want to give it a go. Why don't we get a lettuce on Monday? Done. And then put it in the fridge and come back and check. I mean, Marina or Vicky may throw it out within 60 days, but we will tell them that they must not. That is true, hey, yes. Also, my housemate makes a really great salad with iceberg, you'll probably already know this, but he puts it in the freezer for a day and then chops it in half and serves it like that with like dill and stuff on top and it's all crispy in heaven. What? Yeah, it's really good. I'll get him to send it to you. I love it when I've he does it. I've noticed that people are grilling the lettuces now. Yeah, I've not had that. But I haven't that. had the frozen, frozen. one. Oh, yum, I'd love to know yeah. all about that. Now, I did want to talk about Cher, who's been snapped on the uh, red carpet with her much younger boyfriend. And you and I are at loggerheads, Jack, because I think it looks like they're really in love and they love each other's company and you think it's a publicity stunt. I think it looks very PR-y. I know, like, he's... There's a 40-year like, age gap, which is fine. I'm, I love an age gap, but the way they're kissing Swanee, it's like once he's kissed her, he pulls away and giggles as if it's, like, a weird thing to be doing. But maybe she just said, hey, I'm 85. <laughs> and, he's, and he's laughing at the ridiculousness maybe. of it. Maybe. I think they look like they're very, very happy. Let's quickly move on. I never do three, but, you know, it's Friday. What are you going to do? Let's jam it in. Uh, Scott Disick is in the in the middle of an Ozempic or, you know, whatever the generic brand yes. of that sort of stuff is. Um, Maelstrom at the moment, because in the most recent episode of that reality show, he's having a chat with 
Chloe. Chloe at the fridge, and the fridge is open, which drives me crazy, by the way. I'm always like, close the fridge, Leo! Yeah, because then it starts beeping as well. Oh my God, I'm like, decide what you want and then open it and Correct. get it. Correct. Anyway, they're having a chat with the fridge open, and they're clear as day, right in the middle of the butter crisper, <laughs> is, um, is some medication of some sort. Now, everyone's like, oh my God, sprung. Jack, Guys, please come on! Come on! It is the Kardashians. They screen and look at every episode and every scene before it airs. This was one hundred percent intentional. One hundred percent. The way Scott and Chloe are standing side by side of the fridge door, it's as if they've made room for the cameraman to get a good shot they've of it. They frame the shot, and you mark our words. We are old dogs yeah. with this sort of stuff. We know there would have been a signed contract from Pfizer or whoever makes it. <laughs> Before that went to air for sure. Ricky Lee, Tim and Joel are up next. They'll be calling someone at five o'clock with ten thousand dollars. I will see you on Monday, Swanny. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.